Here we are, three years into No Man's Sky's life cycle. Hello Games have been plugging away update after update, and here we are with No Man's Sky Beyond, the controversial game's seventh major update, putting a large focus on multiplayer and quality of life fixes, and majorly a full VR implementation. For all of the conversations surrounding this game over the last three years, good or bad, it's still here and it's here to stay. Is Hello Games' No Man's Sky the comeback story that its fans really hope that it is? Or is it time for Hello Games to finally move on? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the LZ and my three-year review of No Man's Sky in 2019, not just particularly for Beyond, but as a package as a whole. And first things first, I want to talk about the pros of the state of No Man's Sky as Beyond brings it to. Obviously, we can't talk about the state of No Man's Sky in 2019 without talking about its excellent evolution from the launch. There have been seven major updates since its controversial launch, all of which bring a long library of fixes, quality of life improvements, and interesting features. But shockingly, only about a quarter of the content added through those updates were actually that of the controversial missing features that were advertised before launch. So an overwhelming majority of those updates were new and things that weren't even hinted about, much less presented before the game launched three years ago. One of the major focuses of the Beyond update is the new anomaly and the Nexus. These are absolutely perfect concepts for the game. Honestly, I cannot rave enough about this particular feature. It does so much to improve the No Man's Sky experience. It brings the current content structure of previous updates and beyond into a better, more cohesive focus. It provides a vehicle for much needed progression but mechanics and a central place in the game to help deliver those activities in a more organized manner. And the new anomaly is really a perfect middle ground for those who would like to participate in cooperative play versus those who would prefer a more solo experience. Obviously, if we had to compare the Nexus to any other game experience, obviously Destiny 2 is just a really good way of doing it. And this may come as a surprise to some of my viewers and fans of the game, but really, I think this is a great thing to copy from another game, right? A central hub to do all of these activities, right? Before you go out and explore the universe, I think that's really something. It's really important, and it does a whole lot to bring the the focus of the game to a central point that doesn't really remove from the larger exploration experience. It doesn't take away from the game at all. Another big positive of the Beyond update is the phenomenal quality of life enhancements. The game got a decent inventory overhaul this time around, bringing a lot of common sense things. Things like being able to move tech around, things like upgrades and, and, and installed equipment is, is just such a common sense and amazing addition. It's a little unfortunate that it took them this long to realize that this is something that the inventory system in the game needed. I'm also pretty sure that it's something that the community has asked for pretty widely. Better late than never, but still welcome. Menus definitely flow a little bit better this time. There's definitely some improvements that I would still make that uh, sort of make menu navigation cumbersome. But for the most part, things are a little more organized, a little more optimized. They've taken the quick menu in the game and made it a little more organized uh, and, and a little more focused. Things definitely make more sense categorically within the quick menu, especially since they added a whole lot more things to it, like base building mechanics and electricity, wiring and power generation. And even though the quick menu is still pretty organized and maybe a little more easier to navigate, I would still call it a bit cumbersome and really would prefer a more radial style menu. And even though I'm not a VR player, I don't play VR on either the PS4 or the PC, a lot of the changes made to the game to accommodate VR are very welcome, even for us non-VR users. The more immersive 
starship interiors are just so pretty to look at. It's it's I can get into my ship and just spend minutes just looking around and almost a completely full view around the cockpit to just appreciate the more delicate pieces of immersion and detail that they added to these things. They've practically doubled the size of starships now, which makes the scale a lot more believable. Looking back on the actual size of the ships before the Beyond update, it makes you wonder why you were flying around in a toy airplane. The performance optimizations and frame rate stability additions to accommodate VR were definitely welcome too, though we'll talk about those here and again in a moment and not so positive of a light. But overall, not only is the performance a little better, they've taken the time, gone back and fixed something that they did with the Visions update, which was a reduced color palette and muted colors. Things are definitely a lot more a lot more pretty. The colors are back for the most part. The clouds are definitely cleaner. And the game in general is just a smoother experience. And importantly, with every gigantic update comes a new wave of new players. And another thing that they've done is made a more cohesive user experience, especially for new players just starting up or those who are starting new saves. The game definitely does a better job of helping you along in your first hours. It's definitely easier and, it, and the game does a better job of sort of walking you through what you need to do without you having to spend so much time connecting the dots for things that really should be obvious. Before Beyond, complaints from more casual players or those who don't particularly enjoy this genre as much, typically the complaint was around resource mining, collecting, and crafting. If you're playing on normal mode, these mechanics have been streamlined and relaxed a little bit to put a better focus on your general experience. But one thing I've always appreciated about No Man's Sky that maybe I just haven't thought enough about is that No Man's Sky is artistically first class in its design quality compared to other games that have tried to copy it. You can definitely tell that Hello Games have put time into the art and the design and everything that they do. For a tiny indie studio for such an ambitious game, you would expect for the design to be less than quality. But artistically and creatively, everything seems to look like it was made by a bigger studio with a bigger budget and bigger resources. The artists at Hello Games really are first class. Everything from the new Nexus design, which looks super rad, the new designs of the new interiors for ships, the new NPCs that were added to the game, they all carry a distinct and well-refined look that I really, really respect. All in all, the Beyond update brings out a pretty good package that if you're an existing player that's been playing since maybe next at least, your experience has maybe been just a little bit improved. So let's get to the areas of opportunity. There's a lot of good things that have happened for No Man's Sky in the last three years, Beyond obviously bringing a lot of those good features too. But over those three years, with every single one of those updates, or at least the more sizable updates that generally happen on a yearly basis, those updates have launched with a myriad of bugs that consistently render new content updates frustratingly broken. The new anomaly at launch was broken for roughly a week, where all platforms were experiencing crashes, simply for trying to enjoy the new multiplayer compatibility. Now don't get me wrong, Hello Games does a great job at tackling these bugs and having them done well within a couple of weeks to up to a month. But the problem with these bugs is twofold. It really harms the experience of that new update, that fresh coat of paint, when you really have to enhance your patience for weeks after the update launches just to ensure that you can enjoy the content that came with it. Not only that, but in a lot of cases, new content updates almost guarantee that previously resolved bugs are re-broken with this new update. Issues with the game that were resolved about a year ago even are now broken again. Now, many of the major bugs have been fixed at the time of the recording, and there's a new mega update coming to PC and consoles literally any day now, which is good. I hope it resolves a lot of what the problem Problems the game has already, which, you know, probably affects a limited amount of players, to be fair. Particularly right now, one of the larger bugs, one that's affecting myself as well, is that the optimization to the game has messed with the terrain generation, making it inconsistent and sometimes dangerous to your save file. The only time that I have died on my survival save in the hundreds of hours that I have for it was due to this very bug. I fell through the planet and to my demise. It's also made terrain generation really patchy, 
Grass doesn't want to show up for up to a couple of minutes. Landing your ship is a chore simply because the ship doesn't realize that there is terrain below you because it effectively hasn't loaded in yet. Normally, I wouldn't cry about bugs so much, but when they are a risk to your save file and that you have to go through the pains of backing your save files up, it's just a little bit of a chore. And the patience should only last but so long before we criticize how these bugs are tested before the launch of a new major content update such as this. Looking at the Nexus, I had a lot of praise for the Nexus in the pros section of the video. It has a lot of potential, sure, but the cooperative function in Nexus only really features mundane activities. Basic things like going to dogfight together or explore together or kill some flowers or aliens together or let's go build a base sure could be fun on paper but looking at the reality there's no real incentive for players to play together aside from the fact that these activities are really just basic there's no real creativity involved in them they're just here go and do the things that you would normally do by yourself together and here's a little bit of a reward for them maybe but really you can do the same things from the nexus menu yourself and get the same reward so what really is the benefit of doing these things together other than just for the sake of it talking about incentive to play together there's also no real systemic or interface encouragement to partner up either there isn't anything particularly in the nexus that says hey you should play together other than maybe a little menu chat item that pox up uh, that that pops up saying that this particular user has started a mission. The good news about this is, is that there are community missions that are incoming with the new upcoming update, supposedly, which could resolve this issue to maybe a degree. Here's hoping if we go, if we have the previous community missions to go by though, they weren't that good. So I'm hoping they're a little more creative this time. But the indications are that the community missions are only going to be for a limited time, which is unfortunate because No Man's Sky could use a more systemic and perpetual and continual community mission that's a little bit more hands off for Hello Games and more entertaining and perpetual in the game itself. And I don't want to come across as unfair to Hello Games for this criticism, but VR just isn't something that's for me. So if you remove the VR aspect, which really is the largest and most central aspect to this particular update beyond, looking at the Nexus and the suite of quality life fixes for the game it suddenly becomes clear that there's very, there's very little new content for such a large update. Most of the new additions for Beyond are just reorganizations of existing features and quality of life improvements, which is fine. But these things do very little to move the game beyond what Next was a year ago. I'd like to know just how many more quality of life improvements that No Man's Sky really needs before it's safe to say that we can simply just move on to taking more risks with the game itself. Which leads me to the biggest problem with No Man's Sky, and I've talked about this the months leading up to the update. The biggest problem for No Man's Sky is its failure to realize its own potential. We are three years in now. The game hasn't taken full advantage of its own potential. We have one of the most unique video games of this particular generation. The tech that runs No Man's Sky is super, super impressive. Its team is passionate and well cohesive. They're happy with what they do. And No Man's Sky has an interesting vision. That is when it is they take the time to allow you to experience it or share that with. No Man's Sky is in desperate need to just let its hair down. Do something bold with itself, right? VR is nice, but it only caters to a fraction of its player base. Multiplayer is nice, but if you're not adding anything compelling to do together, it's just playing the regular game together. And quality of life changes are nice, but they do very little to drive the game forward. I know that it seems a little stupid to complain about the gigantic list of quality of life changes. They really are nice. No Man's Sky is absolutely not the game that Sean Murray promised us three years ago. You are absolutely right, it's not. It's so much more than that now. The quality of life fixes have been the primary driver, in my opinion, to make it that. For better or worse, No Man's Sky, along with those quality of life changes, has become such an amazing experience. Maybe if you're just diving in, but 
if you're an existing player that's been here since day one, you're used to it by now. I know it might seem like an unfair criticism. It Fa its failure to realize its own potential. But No Man's Sky is such an ambitious game, an ambitious concept. I'm sitting here waiting for it to literally do something ambitious, to take advantage of itself, to really spread its wings and fly, to do something ultra remarkable. It doesn't need a story or a campaign. It needs to be more emergent with itself. It doesn't need a capability of a play of a few players coming together to do mundane tasks. It needs an experience for those players to go forth to together and enjoy. But ultimately what it needs is it needs us, the community, to encourage them to do those things. And in closing, I really feel like No Man's Sky is ahead of its time. Perhaps it's a game that's too much for the existing hardware that we have these days. But I also feel like it's hard not to have expectations in what the potential that No Man's Sky holds can do for itself. It is the most impressive tech that I have seen from any game this generation, and there's just no arguing that. I'm on a planet and I can see terrain as far as the eye can see, and it wasn't made by hand, but it was made by heart. I'm in space and I see gigantic planets in front of me and they're not a drawn 2D background. I can go there and there's terrain that I can walk on, water I can swim in. It wasn't created by hand, it was created by heart, right? But regardless of my criticisms, it's a game that I can't put down. It's shocking that for all of its flaws, No Man's Sky is something that it's just hard not to keep coming back to. But we all have our reasons that we keep coming back to it. It's an amazing comeback story worth your attention. Perhaps my criticisms are wrong. Perhaps No Man's Sky doesn't need to be the game that I want it to be, but rather it's the anti-game that nobody knew it could be. Nobody knew that they needed Fantasy 7, at least not in my generation. Nobody gave a damn about first-person shooters on consoles before games like Halo, Combat Evolved, and GoldenEye pioneered the effort. No Man's Sky has an amazing future waiting for it, but only if Hello Games are willing to really let it shine. And I hope they do. Kudos to Hello Games for sticking with it for so long and letting this project, this passion project, bloom right before our eyes. And a word of thanks to those who have supported the LZ, those who have contributed to the PC fund and contributing nearly a quarter of all the funds we need here to continue the LZ thriving. Check the description below to donate yourself. And thanks to those who contribute monthly to the LZ and any of those who have ever shared or liked one of my videos. Thank you for stopping by for my review of No Man's Sky Beyond and No Man's Sky 2019. And I'll see you in the next one.